Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be doing something slightly unique. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Atari Lynx, a platform I think I have talked about maybe in vague reference like three times ever in the 12 or so years that I've been on YouTube. A little over 11, not, not quite 12. But um, yeah, specifically what we're going to be talking about is this. This is the Lynx Game Drive by Retro HQ. Now, in short, what this is is a flashcard for the Atari Lynx. What does that mean? Well, I'm sure most of you already know, but it's a cartridge that would allow you to play every single game ever made for this particular flat platform on the original hardware, which is very cool. Before we go into the details about that, though, I want to give a shout out to RetroTowers.co.uk. Uh, they sent this to me absolutely for free for the purposes of review, and I've been, you know, I've been doing videos on their stuff for a long time. Dan, the guy who runs it, is a great guy. Uh, link in the description. Check it out. I'll include a coupon code. It's my name, uh, and you get like five percent off your order. I don't make any money off of it. That's just for you guys. It's just a deal I worked out with Dan for you guys. Um, but yeah, he's legit. So support him, especially if you're in the UK. You know, support the hometown there. Well, the home country. But anyway, um, yeah, so Dan's awesome. Uh, but yes, he was cool enough to send this to me to check out. And I want to give a shout out to Retro HQ as well, uh, even though they had really nothing to do with this. <laughs> they just made a good product. Um, this is, uh, they're also British based, so, you know, go UK. You guys did well on this. Uh, but yeah, they, they made this. They made a couple others. And I got to give them props for that because the thing with uh, flashcards uh, is the concept isn't new. It's been around for a very long time. But really until like maybe 11 or 10 years ago, uh, when Crix started introducing the EverDrive line, until then, flashcards were pretty bad. They were, they were like, they, there was no quality of standard. They were kind of just like, eh, I kind of do the thing I say I'm gonna do. Um, but when he came in, he really, you know, elevated the expectation of what they need to do. And as great as Crix is, and he's an awesome guy, I've talked to him many times about stuff, um, but as awesome as he is, he's very particular about which platforms he wants to work on, and then there's a bunch he's just like, eh, I don't really care about those. And that's fine. Not that he couldn't do them, he just doesn't care. And that's totally awesome. Uh, but Retro HQ is like, we care, so we're gonna go ahead and go, go ahead and try to fix some, like, make some of these. So I actually already did a video on one of theirs for the, uh, the Neo Pocket game drive, which was Neo Geo Pocket game drive, um, and it was it was really cool. I liked it a lot. Aside from like one operational quirk, which even they responded to me and said like, yeah, you're basically right. It's a, a memory limitation. There's just nothing else we could really do about it. Aside from that, it was awesome. So they're also working on another one for the Atari Jaguar, which is also awesome because again. That's actually a, like a cool console that gets really no credit. It's not an amazing console, but it's cool. And I would love to be able to actually have access to some of the rarer oddball games on there just to see on original hardware. So I'm glad that's coming out also by Retro HQ. But in the meantime, what we have is the Lynx Retro HQ game drive. Now, as I said before, the, <laughs> the Lynx is a platform I've basically never talked about. I've never done a full video on this thing. I know, I know, I know. I'll do the portable recaps at some point. I swear to you, it'll happen at some point. Um, so I wouldn't normally talk about the history of the, the platform in this particular video, but here's the so here's the short version. Um, Atari really, after the 7800, didn't really do a home console until the Jaguar, which basically meant they sat the fourth generation out. Now they were doing some computer stuff, but aside from that, their only real attempt to kind of throw their weight in there again was the Atari Lynx which was a portable and debatably really the only time Atari ever tried to really compete in the portable market. Um, this was met, this came out in 1989. It was directly intended to compete with both the Game Boy and eventually the Game Gear. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool piece of technology. Like it has a full color screen, a full backlit screen. It has some rotating and scaling features in it. It even has some unique aspects of the the, the layout, which is um, it has like it has these four face buttons, and I think some games actually used all four. But for the most part, that's not really what they're for. Uh, the, it's designed to be the only game portable I'm aware of where you can rotate it and play it either way, uh, depending on the layout of your hands. If you prefer using a thumbstick with your right hand, cool, you can do that, or you can flip it and do this. Now, how does it know when you're doing that? There's a button on there that just tells it to switch. And I think there was actually some games that even took advantage of that, and then just kind of, you know, you would have to like switch it during the game, like to add to the experience. Um, at least that was my understanding from some of the stuff I've looked into. Um, 
Admittedly, though, this is not a console or a portable I ever grew up with, really. I'll, tell, I'll talk about that one day, but that's not important. What is important is how does the game drive fare with it? And the answer is extremely well. Um, yeah, so here's what you need to know about this particular device. It, the only quirk of it, the only thing I didn't like, and I imagine there's a technical reason for this, because otherwise it just seems like a strange hoop to put people through, is when you first get it and you take it and put it into the portable, and you decide to uh, turn it on, it's going to present you with a screen of a QR code and a website. Um, and what you're supposed to do is go to that website and download a firmware update, put that on an SD card, put that in the uh, game drive, and then turn it back on and it will like self-update, which does isn't illogical in the sense that like all the flashcards now need firmware updates. That's fine, I got no problem with that. The weird part is that most of them, like the ones by Terra Onion or the ones by Crix at the EverDrive line, you just go to their website, grab a firmware, and just like download it and throw it onto an SD card. You don't do this weird thing where you have to like turn it on with the, the device first. Um, which even that wouldn't be super weird, I guess. But where it does get strange is that the QR code and the website are unique to your particular device. And they change depending on when you've updated it. So what that means is, you're not supposed to basically use other people's as far as I can tell. So if you're watching this video and thinking, oh, I'll just scan, you know, I can see the video there on my phone, I'll scan it and whatever, and then I'll just download it in advance or whatever you're thinking, I guess don't do that because you shouldn't be using mine. I don't have a problem with it, but it may have a problem with your particular device because they seem to be somewhat unique to each particular card. Um, I don't know if that was some sort of weird memory limitation or what that was, but the fact that you have to do that is kind of strange. And maybe it's to protect themselves in some capacity to see who has like a real card. I don't know. But either way, it's it's a thing you have to do. It's not hard, it's just weird. But so they they say you can just type the website in, but even they recommend not doing that because and I thought, ah, I could do it. No, you can't. <laughs> the problem is like the Lynx does not have the resolution to make it apparent what letters and numbers you're actually looking at. You can be like certain that you're you know looking at an O but it's actually you know a zero or in one case like I was looking at what I, I knew was a Z and it turns out it was a two you know like it's just not there's too many odd combinations that you're just gonna get wrong like the eight and the B both look identical so it's recommended just use a QR code scan with your phone get the website download the thing boom now the SD card you're putting it on has to be formatted to FAT32 uh, which is not a big deal, that's very standard. Um, they recommend using a 32 gigabyte or a smaller card, which you could do. They did not recommend higher cards, although I'm actually using a 128 gigabyte card and I'm not having any issues, um, so lucky me. But uh, also formatting a 128 gigabyte card to FAT32 is not standard, so you need certain software to do that. It's totally freeware, it's not any problem, it's just an extra step. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this type of thing, but it is something you have to do. Um, but again, freeware, not a hard thing, just an extra step. Once you've done that, it's kind of up to you how you feel like displaying things. The firmware update itself has to be on the root directory, meaning just plop it on there, don't put it in any weird folder, don't do anything else. As for the games, that's up to you. You have to obtain those games yourself. Unfortunately, they're not provided because that would be kind of illegal. Um, but once you get them, uh, you create a folder calling it whatever you want for your own personal methods of uh, organization. I just called it Atari Lynx and then open that up. And then if you want, you can do subfolders based on letters or based on genres or whatever you like. In my case, I just did two. One was retail for retail original release games and one for homebrew games. Now, the thing is, the Lynx is a tad unique in this because as far as retail games go, there was only like 70 ever released, maybe 75 that ever came out. Whereas the homebrew stuff oddly has more. There's like a hundred games made for it already. Um, and a lot of them are actually like legit. Like, and so, yeah, uh, I, I only grabbed a couple of the homebrew ones, just the ones that kind of made me curious. Like somebody ported a, a version of Alien over to this and then Mortal Kombat was ported to it and from the homebrew scene, but there's also other ones. Um, there are actually some cool games on here. Batman Returns uh, was like the most common game. That was, it was I think it was a pack-in at one point, but it was actually a cool little side scrolling beat beat-em-up. There's a cool version of Raiden on here. There is actually some decent software on there. One other feature that's kind of unique to this thing is that it has trainers built in. And I know, I know, some devices have like Game Genie as an option. This has the trainers built into it. And what does that mean? Some games have codes ready to go. So when you want to load the ROM, it'll be like, hey, here's some codes. Do you want to use them? Yes or no? 
and you can turn them on or off. So you can play Batman Returns and just be like totally invincible if you want. Now as far as size goes, it is it is essentially the exact same size, which makes sense, except it's a little thicker. The originals were basically the thickness of like two credit cards stacked on top of each other. This has that same thickness mostly until it starts to get towards the back because the machinery essentially needed was a little bit more complicated, so it gets thicker. However, that in no way, shape or form you know, is a problem when fitting it into the device. Uh, and uh, it seems to be 3D printed shells. I'm not, yeah, it's 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 very solid. I, I haven't had any sort of issues with it. Yeah, there's not really much else to say. It's, it's It did what it was supposed to do. The only uh, other thing I can think of to note, like once you're actually using it, uh, load times, basically non-existent. It pretty much loaded everything immediately. Uh, it has like no compatibility problems. As far as I can tell, there isn't a single game that does not work either from the original set or the homebrew set, which actually is cool because a lot of the homebrew sets were built for emulators, not actually for the original hardware. This allows you to try those on original hardware if you're the guy who wants to do that. Um, and yeah, they, they, all, they all ran the way I would expect. Uh, the only other thing I can really think to point out about that though, is one thing that the links th this device does is it tries to do you a favor in that, oh, the last game I detected you playing was in this folder, so I'll just open up to that folder by default. But if you create multiple folders, that might get annoying. So as far as I can tell, there's no way to undo that, but what you can do is start it up, and then if you press the options button, you'll just back out to the previous directory. That's like small potatoes as far as a problem. Um, in fact, it could be to your benefit if you decide to keep every single game in just one folder. The only reason you may not want to do that is because it might there might be so many games in there eventually, if you include the homebrew stuff, that it could slow down the page cycling, um, which could be a problem. You can also add custom artwork to the ROMs if you really want to do that, although I'm not going to do that personally because it's nice, but it's, I just don't need to do the effort. But um, yeah. That's, that's really a kind of about it, other than that, if you have one of these old Game Boy cases laying around, incidentally, these things work perfectly. They're like the same exact dimensions as Lynx games. They fit in there. I almost wonder if Atari did that on purpose, <laughs> just so they wouldn't have to make their own cases. Oh, yeah, yeah, go get Game Boy ones. You guys know what Game Boy is. So I'm going to use that to keep the uh, Lynx game drive safe. So thank you very much to RetroTowers.co.uk for hooking me up with this. Thank you to RetroHQ for making such a cool thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you can please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate that. Check out all the social media and the stuff in the description, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and all that fun stuff. I appreciate that as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.